Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card from Salt Lake City from a betting perspective. And for those of you that have never seen one of these, we take a very contrarian approach to UFC wagering, as we do to all forms of wagering. Uh, kind of believe here in hedge, hedge fund world that uh, prices are pretty efficient. And the way to get edge is not try to challenge that per se, but to try to find which part of the line and which part of the prop is driven more by recency bias and public psychology and just basically unsharp takes um, as opposed to trying to just out analyze the entire community. And that's the way very, very sharp wagers uh, in all forms of life kind of think about things especially when there's a big vig involved. Uh, it, it takes quite the ego, in my opinion, to believe that you can just out analyze the line without taking into account what goes into it. In other words, um, the different biases, the different, uh, different things that drive human nature is something that you can gauge and it's something you can analyze. And all I can promise you is that this type of approach um, will get you on things that seemed non-instinctive, but uh, I'm almost guaranteeing you that you're going to be on the right side of the line. Because um, when a line is based on so much public perception and a little bit of reality, if you take the, re take the opposite side of the public perception, you're usually getting the best of it. So what we like to do is kind of follow the, the common themes that a lot of the Twitter sharps and the and the MMA experts and the public have been kind of on during the course of the week and essentially fade those because those are the types of things that are going to be overvalued. And whether that is a, a fighter per se um, or a prop, because a lot of the time, especially in MMA, people get really hung up on uh, there being some sort of, sort of binary outcome where if X wins, it will be because of this, or if Y wins, it will be because of that. And while styles do make fights, so to speak, um, usually the props just overcompensate for those types of narratives. The, the reality is there's quite a bit of chaos in MMA and the chaos results are the results that are usually undervalued. So if you could just kind of make a living and, and fade like the, the stories that are really easy to tell, you're probably going to do really, really well. And that is involved, that, that applies to MMA wagering. It applies to to baseball, it applies to the stock market. The stock market, if you if you identify a stock which is you know the leader in their space, hot, strong balance sheet, a product everybody knows, the stock that's so easy that your five year old can tell you to buy it, it's probably a short. Okay, um, but that's for another that's for another discussion. Um, okay, so let's just get started, and you'll see what I mean when we go over the go over these fights. Uh, now, again, let's go over the rules here. There are 12 fights on this week's card. We are going to bet one thing from each fight, and that's just the way we do it. It's definitely not the greatest money management system in the world, but that's just what we do. And we're going to bet one unit each fight, and each unit for me is going to be $180. So we're going to be betting 180 on 12 fights. Um, and you're probably going to be on a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense, but you get used to kind of playing this way. You're number one. I think you're going to be profitable long-term. But number two, it's going to teach you just how to be a better wager and a better, you know, analyzer of things like this. So even if you don't win on this card or even the next two, three or four cards, I think your 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 life skills are going to be enhanced uh, by by following this type of approach. Um, now, you'll notice for those of you who are sharp, they only have 21, 26 in the account right now. So I'm actually not going to be able to get everything in. Um, because it's going to take 2160 to get 180 times 12. But what we're going to do is in the last fight, and this is the other rules rule, is that we're presuming that we're going to probably lose all 11 before that. We're not really going to, but uh, we might. So we, we usually do just for fun is for the last fight in the main event, we, we just find something that is going to be 11 to 1 or higher. Um, and it's got to fit our criterion. It's got to be an unpopular take um, that has some chance of actually happening. Okay. So here we go. Uh, Miranda Maverick versus Priscilla Cachuera. I, I don't know. People just don't seem to learn their lesson here. You know, every, every time you have Miranda Maverick, she fights. She's a big favorite. Sometimes she's a small favorite and she just never outpaces her odds. In her last fight, she was minus 300. They just pounded her. OK. And and and, and she lost easily. She was like a minus 150 against uh, 
what you've got, Aaron Blanchfield, she just got destroyed. I mean, like they always, and they just, the public just keeps coming back to her. And then on the other hand, you have Priscilla Cachuera, who she has won four out of her last five fights and four of them, they're, four of them were as an underdog. I mean, she's an underdog in almost all of her fights and people just, just keep on making reasons to to bet against her. And I, you know, and, and even this week, I figured people would learn their lesson, you know, but they went right back to it. And the reason why they went right back to it was because they, pro they proclaimed that Miranda Maverick has this big, big grappling edge. Okay. Um, and they, they rely on this styles make fights thing. Okay. And yes, while that is true, it's not, it's not just that easy, you know, that, okay, Miranda Maverick's a better wrestler. So she's going to take her down and submit her. Okay. They've said that about a lot of fighters that have fought Priscilla Cachuera before. Okay. Sabina Mazzo was fighting her and you know what they said? Oh, she's going to take her down and submit her. Well, she took her down and she got tired and Priscilla beat the crap out of her. You know what I mean? So uh, listen, maybe Miranda Maverick does have the, the big grappling edge, but that seems to be the hugely popular take and the money just, just, just they just keep betting this woman. So we're gonna take Priscilla Cachuera plus the two thirty five for one eighty. So we're gonna just put these in now. It might not let us bet these right away because we're on Zoom and the DraftKings doesn't like when you're on Zoom. Um, so we're gonna move on. Uh, Matthew Semmelsberger versus uh, Urus Medic. Um, this one is a really easy one to break down because you have a very very popular narrative that's going on right now that's driven the. Let's, well, it's a lot of things that have just driven this line. Uh, it opened up, I think, Semmelsberger, like minus 140, and people are all, all, all over him. A lot of it is because Urus Medic is from this Alaskan uh, fight scene, and the Alaska regional scene just has this incredibly awful reputation that apparently if you fight there, you lose. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just ridiculous. But not only that, but... You have Uris Medic is moving up a weight class on short notice at high elevation. So all these things, you know, combined with the Alaska region fight scene, plus that Matthew Semmelsberger is just very aggressive and he puts on a lot of volume. I mean, it seems as though Medic should have no chance here. So we're going to take it. Uris Medic plus the 175 for 180. Um, okay, uh, moving on. We have C.J. Vergara versus Vinicius Salvador. So uh, C.J. Vergara, like he has that dog in him. Number one, uh, lo I love betting against the guy that has that dog in him. Uh, he he'll fight for your money. Love that. I love betting against guys that'll fight for your money. Because um, these are just kind of things that people say that that just drive the price up of guys like this. Um, and then you have Vinicius Salvador who. For, for lack of a better term, what, what I've heard during this whole week is he's either quote unquote a front runner, which means that he only is good when he's like a big favorite, or number two, that he's just bad. Okay. So you have CJ Vergara, who's got that dog in him. He's he's got the the, the cardio at elevation. And Salvador is just bad, you know, and yet it's only 135. So uh, there's got to be something here. Uh, this looks like, you know, I don't know. Uh, so we're just going to take Salvador plus the 135. I mean, nothing nothing fancy here, but it just seems that this is where the value is. All right. Um, moving on, we have uh, where are we? Jake Matthews versus Darius Flowers. I don't know why Darius Flowers has been getting a little bit of steam as as that guy that's got a lot of power and is going to go after it in the first round. And Jake Matthews, despite him being a really, really strong prospect, it, people are kind of crapping on him for being inconsistent, for having, not to say a bad chin, but apparently in his last fight uh, well, against the aforementioned Semmelsberger, he was taking a lot of damage and that you really just can't trust Jake Matthews. So for me, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for the Jake Matthews side of this, and we're just going to play him inside the distance. Um, we're not going to lay the minus two seventy five or anything like that. But if Darius Flowers has all this first has the first round upside, um, what people are projecting is that Jake Matthews, if he's going to win, he's going to survive the first round and then probably get him out in round two or three. So the idea is that those two sides are probably the sides that are probably overvalued a little bit. So the only way you can really bet this is either Jake Matthews by decision or Jake Matthews in round one. Curious which is the more likely um, 
uh, which is the bigger price. Let's see. Well, Jake, let's see. Jake Matthews in round one is plus 180. Jake Matthews by decision is plus 330. Um, we're just going to take, um, boy, oh boy, Jake Matthews by decision. That is something that I don't think anybody is playing. Oh my God, look at this. Jake Matthews in round two plus 450, though. All right. So if we're going to presume that this is the, that this one is the one that's fitting the narrative, then we're going to have to play the, the Jake Matthews round three, I think. Jake Matthews round, round one is just too, it's just too short for our likings here. But then again, if we're going to keep it real, this is the one that's going to, that's the most contrarian, right? Because the, the reality is that people are saying that Flowers round one or Jake Matthews round two or three. And the fact this line is so weak, is so, is so, so bad, probably makes it a good play. So let's just do that. So um, we got forgot to put the Salvador went or went in. So we're going to play Jake Matthews in round one uh, plus the one eighty. Um, all right, uh, moving on. We have Roman Capula versus Claudio Ribeiro. Um, Ribeiro is apparently pretty aggressive, where uh, Capula is more technical. So. What what you're hearing a lot, you are seeing a little bit of steam for for Ribeiro as kind of an underdog. Um, so we're probably not going to play him. The Kopilov side that people are playing is KO round two or three. So those are probably the overvalued sides. What you should probably do is either play Kopilov in round one or Kopilov by decision. Let's take a look at those at those prices. I think those are the ones that are going to be a little bit ignored here. Kapila round one plus 250. Kapila by decision plus 300. Let's do that one. Um, Kapila by decision plus 300. I don't think that many people are playing this. All right. Um, moving on. Derek Lewis, Lewis versus Marcus Ruggiero de Lima. Um, I'm pretty confident in what I want to do here. So you have two heavyweights who, you know, and you have Derek Lewis, who's basically knockout or bust. And essentially, if, if you know, if it's either, if he doesn't knock DeLima out in the first round, um, then it's basically going to be DeLima all day. Um, that's essentially the, the, the narrative here. So what, what you cannot bet, honestly, is Derek Lewis round one or DeLima round two. So let's take a look at some other options here. I wonder what, before I look at it, I wonder what DeLima round one looks like. And then I wonder what Derek Lewis round two looks like. And then the other one I want to look at, this is another one that very, very few people are betting, is the over, and not the over one and a half, because I think people can bet the over one and a half. Because people could make the case again that that Lewis survives round one, but then Delima takes over round two. But I'm looking for an alt line maybe of what if what can I get on this fight going over two and a half rounds? So these are the these are I think the options that are contrarian. So fight over two and a half, Lewis round two, that's probably going to be really really juicy, or Delima round one, which I don't think is going to be really juicy. So let's take a look at this. Uh, Delima, oh, let's pull that fight up first of all. Okay, so let's look at rounds first. We're just going to compare all these. Hold on, yeah. I'm good, thank you. I'm already on. Um, so let's see. So you have Lou, first of all, Delima round one is only plus 120. That's no fun. Lewis round two plus 800. <clears throat> wow. I think I might be forced to do that, but let's just take a look at this. Oh, this is the one I want. So fight to start round three plus 240. Boy, oh boy. I, I, I don't think I can resist this one. How about Derek Lewis in round two plus 800? We're going to try this one. Oh. Lewis round one is 380. 
It's a big jump to 800, but people are playing this one. So we're going to play Derek Lewis round two. The only thing I worry about the Lewis round two, are people playing this because of how he got there against Curtis Blades? He, he fought Curtis Blades and he made it all the way to round three or four, and then he knocked him out. Now we're going to take a shot. Derek Lewis round two, plus 800 for 180. No, no one is doing this. All right, uh, Gabriel Bonfim versus Trevin Giles. Um, this is the quote unquote. This is I don't want to rant too far about this, but this is the second Bonfim brother. And what if you listen to enough videos, what you're going to hear is so this is the good Bonfim brother, and all the content providers are going to say have been saying the same thing. They were saying that well, people were confused of which was the right bon, right Bonfim brother where I was the one that knew that Bonfim was the good one, that this, 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 this. Anyway, there was no confusion about who the better the better one was, um, but the content providers seem to be taking a lot of credit for it. Nonetheless, you have Bonfim at a plus, a minus 330, and he probably has Trevin Giles just covered everywhere. You know, Trevin Giles is low volume, um, and uh, he's low volume. He He's... His fight IQ is not usually the greatest. And Bonfim, you know, he finishes all of his fights. He's the quote-unquote best, better Bonfim brother. He has Trevin Giles covered everywhere. Um, so I, I just can't resist. We're going to play Trevin Giles plus 275. All right, uh, moving on, we have – and again, if you, if you look at um, – say 30 videos. I mean, I haven't looked at 30 videos. I don't think you're going to find a single, a single pick of Trevin Giles. And I don't even mean just to win. I mean, even with the odds, I haven't seen anybody take Trevin Giles. So uh, this is, this is has got to be the side. And we're going to get to another one in a few minutes. All right. Um, Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland. All right. People are on both sides of this from a win perspective, but but the real key to this one is the is the matter of victory. So the the narrative here is that Chiesa is just going to be able to take Kevin Holland down. Um and so if Chiesa wins, it's going to be either by submission or by decision. So it's so clear that that's his route that I don't think either of those either of those, those sides can really be wagered, okay? The only thing you can really do if you want to play Chiesa is just play him just on the money line, okay? If you start getting into, like, his methods of victory, I just don't think they add. I think that both sides of these, you know, whether it be by submission or by decision, I think they're both pretty well picked up on by the public. Um, the Kevin Holland side, um, if, if Kevin Holland wins – People are pro probably predicting, well, they've been saying that it's mostly going to be by KO. So really the only way you can bet this fight and be contrarian is either play Kevin Holland by decision or Kevin Holland by submission. Now, I think that both of these sides are pretty reasonable here because one thing about Holland is that if he, in fact, is going to be taken down, he's going to be put in a position where he could get a submission. You know what I mean? Because whenever you're in a grappling situation, maybe he gets something off his back. Maybe Chesa does something stupid and Holland kind of gets the submission by being able to grab his neck or something like that. I think that's very possible. Um, and Holland by, by decision is also very, very reasonable because the, the way something like that works is Holland beats him on the feet um, and Chesa does get his takedowns, but the judges kind of favor like the striking, which they tend to do. Unless the 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 grappler gets a lot of ground and pound off, which Chiesa is not the type to do, so I think that either Holland by submission or Holland by decision, both make a lot of sense. Um, and you're actually getting a better price on Holland by decision as opposed to Holland by submission. So we're going to play Holland by decision, actually for 180. Um, the 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 uh, Holland by submission is certainly a kind of a cool style analysis, you know, uh, fight, uh, excuse me, a cool style pick, 
you know, to, to know how these fighters fight and to realize that once you get into these grappling exchanges, um, that Holland could get that submission. So I think even because of that, I have a feeling there is some sort of pseudo, not pseudo sharp money, but sharp money on the Holland by submission side. Um, so let's just be ultra contrarian and fade that too. So we're going to play Holland by decision for one. Um, I think it's actually a really, really good bet, actually, at that price. Moving on, we have, uh, we did this one already, sorry. Derek Lewis, Bond theme. All right, Bobby Green against Tony Ferguson. Uh, real easy one for me. Uh, well, not that easy. So Tony Ferguson is completely washed. He's lost five in a row. Under and 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 Bobby Green is just basically going to piece him up. Under normal circumstances, I would say I'm just going to take Tony Ferguson here, but I think he's got just enough name value that the line is just maybe a little lower than it should be. And in addition to that, you have Bobby Green, who is just never this type of price. So I I feel as though in a weird way. The Bobby Green side of this is the right side. Um, the the question is how to play this. I mean, I've heard Bobby Green with poor fight IQ, uh, but but so Bobby Green by decision is not so great. Bobby Green by late stoppage isn't so great. The only thing I could squeeze out of this is maybe like a Bobby Green by submission. You know, either Bobby Green by submission or maybe pick the actual round. Let's just take a look at some of these. I, I'd love to play Tony Ferguson, but he's just got too much name value. Um, all right, so Bobby Green, Bobby Green by submission plus 900? Wow. Well, as opposed to that, let's go to the round props, but we're, we're probably going to do that. Round prop. Um Bobby Green round two plus five fifty. Boy, that that's pretty juicy too. Bobby Green by decision plus one twenty. Forget that. Bobby Green round two plus five fifty, or Bobby Green by submission plus nine hundred. You could honestly pick either of those. But I just have a feeling that the Bobby Green round two is one that people are going to be betting. So let, let's – oh, it's just so juicy, though. I mean, he pieces him up, and then Ferguson just gives up in round two. But, you know, it's just such an easy story to tell that we're not going to do it. So let's go. Winning method. Bobby Green by submission for – this is what we're going to do, actually. We're going to do the same thing that we did before. When we played, um, what's his name? Played somebody by submission last week, and it almost it almost worked. I just wanted to make sure that he at least has one win by submission. Actually, we're not going to do that. Yeah, we are actually. So let's let's go here. We're going to go to fightodds.com. I just want to if he's got one win by submission at all, then we will do it. If we, he has none, then we're going to have to go back to the round two. All right, here we go. Um, winner by decision, winner by TKO, winner by decision, 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 winner by the key. There it is. Jacob Volkman, rear naked choke. JP rear, rear naked choke. These are back in 2011. Submission, arm triangle. Submission, submission. This is so little chance to win that we're just going to have to do it. All right. Um, yeah, we're really going to have to come up with something good in the main event to make up for these terrible plays. All right, Stephen Thompson versus Michelle Pahea. Um, so... Stephen Thompson is going to keep uh, keep this on the feet, and 
if he can do that, he probably wins an easy decision because he's just the far superior striker to Michelle Pejea. However, uh, Stephen Thompson is 40 years old, so, and Pejea is the younger man. So Pejea does is sort of like a live dog. Um, so this is what we cannot do. We cannot bet Stephen Thompson by decision. What we could do is play for Stephen Thompson to either – get the KO or for Pejea to get the KO to actually beat Thompson on the feet. Okay. Um, the good thing about playing Pejea inside the distance is that if in fact Pejea can go for takedowns, which is possible, he might actually get a submission. So I don't want to go for just a straight KO, but we are going to play Pejea inside the distance and that's going to be a, Probably a pretty freaking big price, I would imagine. Let's see. Winning method. Pejea by TK or submission is plus – no, that's Stephen Thompson. Pejea by TK or submission plus 380, that's it? That's all you get? It's, it's actually almost the same price as Thompson by TK or submission. But we're, we're going to try it. We're going to try Pejea. By TK or submission. Actually, what we probably should do. If the idea is that Stephen Thompson, if he keeps it on the feet, wins an easy, easy decision. We're probably supposed to play Pejea by decision. So that's what we are going to do. Sorry about that, guys. Pejea by decision for 180. Um, are we missing one fight here? I think we might. Be. No, we're not. So Jan Blahovich versus Alex Pejea. Um, people are all over this on both sides. I mean, I have to say, there's not a real contrarian take that you can make here. I mean, people have talked about all of this. That the one, th the one thing though that is the common theme is that if Blahovich goes for takedowns. He's more likely to get the win. Um, so, and if and if he can't get the takedowns, Pejea is very live for the KO. Um, so really the only methods that you can play here are Blahovich by KO, which is possible, or, Pe or excuse me, Blahovich right by KO, or Pejea by either submission or by decision. Um, I think it's asking a little bit too much for uh, Pejea by submission. Um, so we are going to play Pejea by decision, Pereira Pejea by decision, plus 550. And I think this is a very, very strong play, actually. Not that that matters, but I think it's a strong play. Okay, so we have 11 wagers, and these are just really really bad okay so let's just go over these you have Cachuera, who is really uh, as a style complete mismatch here miranda has her covered every which way from sunday um and she has no chance so we're going to take her uh, urus medic uh, again uh, from the alaska regional scene these guys never win he's also on short notice and fighting at elevation Are you kidding me he has no chance so we're playing him we have venicia salvador who's basically just bad against CJ Vergara, who's got that dog in him, who's got the unlimited cardio. So we're going to play Salvador. Jake Matthews, who's very, very shaky, who's very untrustworthy, is going against the guy who has the first round KO upside. So we're going to take Jake Matthews in round one plus one eight. Roman Kopulov, um, you know, it's either going to be him round two or three, apparently. Um, so we're going to take him by decision, plus 300. Derek Lewis either finishes round one or... Delima takes over and wins maybe round two. So we are going to take Derek Lewis in round two for plus 800. Trevin Giles is basically covered everywhere. Um, this is the good Bonfim brother. Um, and listen, if 30, basically 30 touts are all playing Bonfim, how can he lose? So we're taking Giles plus 275. Kevin Hollins uh, uh, to win by KO, probably going to win by KO. But the real sneaky play is to play him by submission, getting him in the scrambles. The one thing you can't do is play him by decision. So that's what we're doing. By decision plus 550. 
Uh, Bobby Green, it's either going to be him round two or three. He's really not going to going to submit Tony Ferguson. So we're going to try that plus 900. Uh, Michelle Pejea to win by decision because, you know, if if this fight does stay on the feet, it's basically going to be a real easy decision for um, uh, for, for Thompson. So we're going to take Pejea by decision. Uh, Pejea and the other Pejea, again, it, he's probably going to, it's either him by KO or Blahovich by submission or decision. There's really no other reason, no other outcome. So we're going to take Bahia by decision, plus 550. So we have 0 for 11 pretty much. So now we're down at the main event where we have to come in with something, which is 11 to 1. And unfortunately, our bankroll, because the money hasn't hit yet, has prevented us from playing more than uh, 140. So we have to play more than that. Um, now, I could say that I'm going to, once, once the money hits my account, I'm going to play the other $50. But just in case I forget, we're going to play something here that's a little bit juicier than the normal 12 to 1. So let's take a look at this. So we have Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje. Um, you know, this fight's been analyzed to death. I think people are mostly on the, po po the Poirier side. Um, these guys did fight before. Um, you really can't get a contrarian take here because every side of this has been argued. The one thing that's pretty consistent is that um, is that Gaethje is not going to go for the wrestling anymore? That maybe he's going to be not as aggressive and and fight this war that he always tends to fight because he, against Fazeev in his last fight he was going for jabs a little more. Um, that's the only thing that from a narrative that's been pretty well agreed upon. So we're just going to have to pick something here. As most people are on Poirier, we're going to probably pick the Gaethje side. And we're just going to pick our favorite round here. So let's just take a look. Um, let's see. Which of these things pay more than 12 to 1? Pretty much all of them started with round three. So let's play round three, Justin Gaethje for 1,400. Figure Poirier, you know, he's going to play, do, make the more measured, have the more measured approach. So uh, he's less likely to get that, you know, that, 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 mid to late round KO. Um, so we're going to take a shot at this. So Justin Gaethje, round three. We can't play 180. We got to play it for like 120 or whatever that is. How much money do I have in this account? Uh, I think we have enough. Let's play for 100 just to say, stay, stay safe. This will get our money back anyway when we lose the other bets. All right, um, that'll do it. Let's just review one more time. Cachuera plus 235 money line. Medich plus 175 money line. Salvador plus 135 money line. Matthews round one plus 180. Copula by decision plus 300. Derek Lewis round two plus 800. Giles plus 275 money line. Holland by decision plus 550. Bobby Green by submission plus 900. Pejea by decision plus 275. The other Pejea by decision plus 550. Justin Gaethje round three plus 1400. Placing 12 bets for 1.8 for, for mostly 1.80 each. Let's see if they let me place them with Zoom going on. No, it's going to have to wait till I log off of Zoom. Nonetheless, um, uh, good luck, everybody. And uh, we'll get, uh, hopefully we do well.